So this is my journey into the Apple world. I'm not an Apple guy, I'm still a Windows guy. I mean, everything that Apple does is overpriced. I'm kind of growing warm to that. I got the iPad now, an old iPhone. I'm not a Mac guy. But when it comes to this MacBook Air, I mean, yeah, if I'm kind of falling in love with it. I can't believe I'm saying that still, but... <laughs> hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna talk about my love and hate relationship with Apple products and, uh, and how I'm kind of slowly changing my opinion about them. Basically, for the last two weeks, I've been using this new MacBook Air. If you've been following me, you know that I'm not a Mac guy. Like I've had an iPhone because again, I needed like there's certain apps that were only available on, on the iPhone. So I always needed it, but I kind of, I, I basically don't use my iPhone for anything other than those few apps. Uh, I do have an Android phone. When it comes to computers, I've always been a Windows guy. Now, early on in my career, I was forced to use uh, the, the Macs or the, the MacBooks or no, they're not MacBooks. They're basically they were just these awkward looking monitor things with like transparent plastic behind it. I forgot the name of it. Hey, regardless, I had to use it for some graphics that we're working on and I hated using it. Basically, my opinion of Apple has always been that they're overpriced and oversimplified. Like they're they're okay for somebody who doesn't know much about computers, but if you want to really go in there, customize the settings and really do something more advanced, which is what I do a lot in my work, uh, then uh, Apple's not really the products that you're going to be using. Anyways, I've been using this MacBook Air and uh, I'm not gonna say I'm becoming a Mac fanboy. I'm still kind of rooting for Windows. But to be honest, over the last two weeks, pretty much this MacBook has replaced both my desktop and my Windows laptops. And of course, the fact that it's so slim, so thin, so you know, has amazing battery life, there's a lot of great things, just makes it that much easier for me and the kind of work that I do now, which is a lot of it is remote work, uh, and I travel while I'm working. And when I do that, I just don't want to have to carry anything big. So having this thing has actually been a godsend. Now, it doesn't mean that I love everything about Apple. And I'm going to kind of share with you, like I guess, sort of my experience with it so far, the good and the bad. So the first thing, like I said, is the battery life in this thing is amazing. I mean, it basically runs the whole day. Uh, when I do most of the things, which like I said, most of the time I do remote works, I log in and I do stuff on, on the company's basically machines. So I don't even need the really high computing power. And, and a lot of that stuff that we're doing is 3D uh, animations, 3D graphics effects. So again, I, as long as I'm a fast internet connection and a reliable machine, then I can do that. And with this thing, I mean, I basically, if I charge it at night, it runs the whole day. It's never once has it died on me. Now, when I'm video editing, which I have done, and I'll show you some experience about that with you guys, then that's when battery life obviously will, will go down because it just uses more processing. Another really cool feature that I like with Apple, which I didn't even know such a thing existed, is AirDrop. For example, if I take a picture on my iPhone uh, and I want to get that picture now from my iPhone to my computer to, I don't know, use it as a thumbnail or something, whatever, do, do some touch-ups. Well, I can just do airdrop, meaning I can just drop it directly to my uh, MacBook here and it just shows up there in full resolution and it's, I don't know, it's brilliant. I don't know exactly how it works, but it works. Same thing with my iPad if I connect to it. Uh, so that's another, like I said, it's, it's a great feature because like before in the past, I literally would have to like when with my Android phone, I would take a picture, I would email it to myself or upload it to like Google Drive, then I would have to go to a computer, download it, you know, the whole thing. Whereas just having that ability to just drop it and it just shows up in your downloads folder is, is brilliant. And you can do it back and forth, by the way. Like if I do something here and let's say I want to post it on Instagram, which is on my phone, boom, I just airdrop it to my phone. So airdrop is definitely uh, kind of like one of these features that once you've used it, you don't know how you ever got around without it. Now, another thing I really like, which is again, sort of like, I guess this cool thing that Apple has created with this ecosystem of their products, is that they're all so interconnected. So I can, for example, like copy and paste text or, or a link or something on my phone, and I can just like instantaneously paste it here on my, uh, my, on my MacBook, which is again, brilliant. Like if I'm doing some light surfing, and I find some useful information, I can just quickly have it here and on my MacBook and I can use it there. Now, another thing I like about, well, this particular model that I have, which is the MacBook Air, the M2 edition, is that it doesn't have any fans and it's just basically dead silent. So it makes working like with it so easily. And to my surprise, it actually doesn't really overheat, even when I was doing uh, video editing. Uh, which, if you know anything about laptops, like, well, at least for me, 
every laptop I've used before, and I've used some like really expensive Windows laptops, they all have fans, and those fans, the, at the beginning when you're using it, usually it's good. I mean, once you really push that machine, well, usually you'll start hearing the fans a little bit. But also I noticed that like as time goes on, like I have one laptop that I have for two years, it still works, it's a Windows laptop, and it's great in many ways, but some dirt or something got into one of the fans, and it's just, that thing just makes annoying sounds now. So it just goes like, eee! and like whenever the fans kick in and it's just i mean it makes it unbearable sometimes where i'm like i just don't want to work with it this thing again i don't know how they managed to do this without any fans but somehow it cools the machine off and and it it's dead silent and and because of that too like there's no openings anywhere i just kind of feel safer that again no dust and nothing's going to get in it especially when you're traveling right like you just don't know sometimes you put it somewhere i don't know like in a train i've been traveling you open the window boom little dust gets in there or something again i just feel more secure so far with it now again i've only used it for two weeks so i'll do sort of a follow-up and we'll see how that 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 is now how is it performance wise uh i gotta say again if you're just doing your standard office kind of work typing up scripts web browsing and stuff no issues uh, now, I was always worried about, like, because people told me, well, you can edit video on this. And I was like, ah, oh, come on. Like, even on my most powerful, nicest uh, Windows laptop, it's, it very quickly run into limits. And like I said, the fans kick in and gets loud. So I thought, how is this little thin fanless machine going to be able to, you know, give me the ab ability to edit videos? Especially, like, pretty much everything I shoot now is 4K. I edit in 4K, I output in 4K, all that stuff. Well, I've edited two videos since I got this thing on it. Uh, and and I've, for that, actually, because I natively, I just like to edit in, not in Final Cut Pro, but I've used Final Cut Pro and it is just blazing fast. But then I thought, okay, so maybe what if you install some other editing software that's not native to Apple? Maybe it's just, it's not as configured very well to that hardware. Well, my software of choice for video editing is uh, DaVinci Resolve. I've installed the latest version on this and it is rock solid. Like, no, not even one crashed, which is amazing. And it runs so smoothly. So again, I've been able to edit two videos, they're about 10 minutes each uh 4k video and it just goes it just blazes right through it like there's no no issues whatsoever now i did notice like when i would work like five six hours on the bottom like here it does get a little hot to the touch but it's not burning so it's i could still have it on my lap but it just it just gets a little warm i would say and then when i would render it out that's when it got a little warmer to the touch but again it, it rendered it without any issues so like the 4k videos that i edited which I have sometimes like two or three video layers. I have some, usually some simple graphics in it. And I always have some color grading on it because I shoot everything in log. And this is, these are mostly files coming off of the Sony a7S 3 or the Canon C70 that I've been editing with. And again, it played all of that stuff without any issues. So like scrubbing through the timeline is beautiful. Now when it comes to rendering, uh, the 10 minute videos in 4K when I was rendering them, they took uh, around basically half the time. So like around five, maybe a little bit over than five minutes. So it still did it in half the length of the actual video. If I did it in 1080, it did it a half of that. So it was like two and a half minutes, like somewhere there even sometimes, like I think one of the videos was around two minutes. Oh, another thing I really love is like, if you have your, for example, an iPad, which I gotta be honest, I literally bought this iPad. It was on sale. It was like 250 or 260 bucks. So it was like this, it's an older version, gen, generation nine. Uh, so it's an older iPad, but what's brilliant is that, and I literally got this because now I'm using the MacBook Air. I can't believe I'm saying that still, but <laughs> but I'm using that and I even got their pen because I do a lot of like drawing, storyboards and stuff and just having that is, and I gotta say this, this Apple pen, although overpriced, I mean, everything Apple does is overpriced in my opinion still, that's like a big con. But I gotta say this Apple pen is amazing. Like in, it's just a tilt and the pressure recognition is really nice. So like I, if I'm working, I really feel like I'm drawing, you know, almost on, on paper or something. So it's, it's, it's really nice and that's the reason why I got it. Uh, I got this, like again, this older iPad. It's, you know, it's new, like I got it from Best Buy, but, but it's just older in terms of it's not the latest, the most expensive. So it was pretty cheap, like 250, 260 bucks. But what I really love about this is this whole, basically be able to 
mirror the screens, that's one thing, but also the ability to be able to use this iPad now as my second monitor, essentially. You know, I can still plug this MacBook using a dongle uh, to like another monitor or whatever, but a lot of times, like when I'm traveling, having this iPad, which again has amazing battery life, and having the ability to use that as my second screen when I'm, you know, multitasking video editing is just amazing. The Apple operating system doesn't really allow you to kind of go in and really tweak, or at least I haven't found the ability to really tweak the settings and, and stuff like that, like when, it, as much at least as you can do in Windows. Uh, but they have a lot of these features that are just simple click and, and things. So I can go here to uh, screen mirroring, and I can just choose my iPad and you'll notice that it just like instantaneously, you see, it just connects there. So I have the ability now to use this as an extended display and I can change this. I can actually go mirror built in, you know, display. So then it will be the exact copy of what I have here or use a separate uh, display. As you can see, I can go with my mouse here from my main screen to this screen. If I want to grab a window, I can just drag it. It's basically like, again, having another display and it's, Again, it's just the fact that you can do that. It's wireless. I mean, it works pretty seamlessly. I heard that if you connect it, which I haven't even done, with the actual cable, like the USB-C to lightning port cable here on the iPad, then it actually does, like, it, uh, that allows it, I guess, a faster or maybe better connection, even though, again, I haven't had to do that. Like, it just works wirelessly beautifully. Uh, so that is something something really, I mean, it's it's brilliant. And then having, again, the ability to, like, airdrop things from there. So, like, if I don't want to use it as an external display, I just disconnect it really quickly. And then once I'm disconnected, you know, I can go and use my cool new uh, Apple Pen uh, to go in here and and use it as my sketch sketchpad, right? I can write on it. I can I can think. And again, like I'm saying, it just it just works beautifully. The whole this whole ecosystem. So like once you have an iPhone, once you have the iPad, once you have things. So yeah, again, I don't want you guys to think I'm I'm a, I'm a Mac guy now. I'm not. I'm still Windows Windows guy. Although I haven't been using my Windows computers <laughs> in the last two weeks. So yeah, having this ability, like having this interconnectedness, I guess, of these Apple devices. And it's all also really cool. Like, like when I got this, for example, this uh, iPad, uh, or the same thing when I was setting up my, my, my MacBook, it, once you have an Apple ID account, I think they're called, like which I got when I had, had my original iPhone, you just log in with that and then like takes all your settings. It just makes like setting up these devices very quick, intuitive. It's, um, yeah, I, I gotta say, I really like that aspect of what Apple has done. Now, let me talk about some other things I don't like what they're doing. Uh, and that's the, uh, well, the first thing is like little things that annoy me that again, uh, coming from Windows, is just the way that you kind of navigate on, on Mac, basically using the, what is it, the Finder, right? On Windows, you have the Windows Explorer. One thing I really love uh, that Windows does is that they give you the actual option to have a address bar on the top. Well, here I haven't, at least I haven't found a way to be able to do that. So. If you guys find a way, then definitely let me know in the comments b below, like, you know, help me out because because I just, again, I just can't figure out for the life of me how, how I can have like an address that I can just copy and if I have like a really deep directory structure, I can just copy and paste it and go there directly instead of going folder by folder. So that's one sort of annoying thing. Another thing I don't like is how you uninstalling programs. Let's say if I uninstall VLC, then I can just drag and drop it to the trash. But I'll tell you that I don't like like how that's being done because uh, well, well, there's been some software that I found when I uninstalled it that way that actually there were still like these big files left on the computer and I don't have a big hard drive on this MacBook Air. So that was an issue and then I actually had to install, I kind of did a, some looking around and it was called oh, App Cleaner. And that kind of does a better job on installing software with that. But I just wish that Apple had, like like in Windows, you go and you have all your programs and you can see when they were installed, how much space they take up, like where's the directory structure, and you can just remove all the files, including all the temporary files. So that that is one thing that, like, again, and again, maybe there's a way to do it in Mac, but I just, for the life of me, the best thing I found is this app cleaner. Uh, application. Now, there is one last thing I want to say that annoys the living crap out of me and I can't find a solution to this is 
like I've been testing a lot of these dongles now um, and, and like because I'm you know when I'm editing I connect multiple hard drives sometimes I, I connect to an external uh, monitor so I have to have a dongle and and again I've been using a whole bunch of dongles by the way I've been testing the whole bunch of them which I'm going to do a follow-up video about that um, but uh, the one thing that is kind of annoying especially when I'm trying to test this hardware like the dongles is the ability to be able to see how fast files are, are transferring or copying from one, you know, from the MacBook to an external SSD or, or whatever. It's just, for the life of me, I can't figure it out. Like, if I just copy a file, it just, just shows me that it's copying it. In Windows, if you've used it, you know that you just have a little thing, button you press, you extend it, and you can see exactly how fast you're, you're copying files. Well, you can't do that here on Mac, or at least I haven't found a way. Uh, so, again, if you guys know a solution to this, please, please help me, because it is annoying. And especially when I'm trying to, like, test out these different dongles and stuff. I mean, pretty much what I resorted to is kind of copying the same file with one dongle and then just, you know, <laughs> timing it with my, with my stopwatch and then <clears throat> doing it with another dongle and kind of seeing that way more or less which dongle's faster, but I still don't know the exact data rates. Anyway, so this is my journey into the Apple world. Again, I'm not an Apple guy, I'm still a Windows guy, but, um, well, <laughs> if you look at this desk, you might think I'm, I'm lying to you because I got the iPad now, which is the oldest iPad, an old iPhone, but I do have it. Again, I don't really use it other than for like, I do love the camera on this, I do gotta admit that. So I use it for that, take some pictures and stuff, but I don't use it as my daily phone. But when it comes to this MacBook Air, I mean, yeah, if I'm kind of falling in love with it. Uh, so far, I haven't found like it not being able to handle any of the work that I want to do. So like photo retouching, you know, I mean, uh, video editing, doing some of these graphics and stuff is really good. I have not done any 3D animations or graphics on it. But if I do end up using it for that kind of work or having experience kind of trying it out on this, then, then I'll share that in the future videos or an update. But initially, like I said, in my initial two weeks using Apple uh, MacBook Air, good experience. And like I said, I'm not a Mac guy, but but I do start to, I'm, start, I'm kind of growing warm to them, so to a lot of the things that they're doing. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, like I said, if you guys want uh, information about the stuff that I'm using here, all the links down below. And definitely, if you can help me with some of these issues that I have, let me know how in the comment section below. And that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.